just about everything ready to put my beam in up there. Put that one in, this is a two piece beam. The seam is right there, so put one in, one in there. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not. It's a heavy beam, it's nine and a half inches tall by one and three quarter inches thick by 24 inches or 24 feet long. So the idea is to sandwich two beams together to make it one strong beam. But in this scenario I did, I split the beam in half and the seam is right there in the center. So I've got this beam over here, it's cut and ready to go and I'm hoping to get it all up in there in one piece. So let's give it a shot. This could be a disaster. I don't know what's gonna happen. I've got the scaffolding set up, go all the way across. This is the midpoint where I need to get the beam up to. Very heavy, very, very heavy, very heavy, folks. Very heavy. I don't know if this is a bad idea. I'm gonna put a piece of lumber right here. So it'll hold this up. right there folks got it up there just need to go for the last push push it up there push it real good so here goes nothing just need to push it up there push it up there We are not in. I'm resting on a trimmer stud over there and a trimmer stud over on this far side. I need to twist it down like this. Put the bottom in first. Whoa! Need another stud over there. Need another stud. Let's see if I can get a nail in here. That should hold it there temporarily while I get a board put up over on that side. I cannot fall down. Feel a lot better about that now. I cannot fall down. Woo that is not an easy thing to get that up in there. You guys are all gonna moan about this, I already know. You're being unsafe, don't do that. You're standing on that ladder. Oh my gosh, I, I can already hear it now. The safety Sally's in the corner, freaking out over nothing. Ready, set. Stay right there. Get that to stay there. Get this to stay here. Then I can shim it and pound it. Don't kid yourself. This is really gonna work. So this is how you do this when you're a one man show. This is quite, quite the effort for a stinking shed. Got some shims here. I'm gonna shim right here.
Sorry, sucker! You're done! Get in there! It's in! It's in, it's in, it's in! It's in! Oh my golly jeepers creepers, folks! Not an easy task. <laughs> yes! Oh. oh my gosh! I got it. I got it. What is the lesson to be learned? Maybe don't remodel or get your plan right the first time. I don't know. That was intense, I tell you what. That was very, very, very intense. I wanna, I wanna screw that. Oh, what a suck job. Awesome. That was a that was a really tough job getting that up there, but stick with it, you always get it done. It just takes perseverance, and a little bit of effort. In working with this wall, adding these windows, I've got a little pocket behind that beam against the sheathing on the outside. Or I'm gonna put some insulation in there. So I've got the two-inch foam board. I need to cut some rips down into nine and a half inches, the depth of the beam put them up in there. Oh man, that stuff's fantastic. It even has a good smell when you cut it. All right, so I wanna put the insulation up behind this beam here. These screws are four inch screws that I put in here. So they're sticking out about an inch because this is three inches. So I need to back these out just a little bit. So I'm just taking this two inch foam board putting it up behind here so we can get that fit up in there. Ooh, that's a tight fit. So I just need one more small piece in here. process is back off the screws, cut the piece, jam it in, and then screw the screws back in. It'll hold, hold the foam in place. Okay, so that should fit in there like that. And it's a tight fit, just like the other ones. So I pound and pound and pound that to get that up in there. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Piece of foam all the way down and then I can put the seal on. Here's the update for January 26. It's been a few days since I have done any filming, but I've been able to make a little bit of progress on the framing. So it's starting to take shape and the windows are, have been formed and this is what it's gonna look like. So you can see the windows all across the top over there, I've cut them out. One, two, three, four, five windows across the top. I'm leaving these um, boarded up for now until I can get the house wrap on there or the Tyvek so it doesn't let in a bunch of air and so I can retain some of the heat in here when I'm working. I've got a transom window up right here. I've got a door right here. This is gonna be a four foot door. I'm not so sure if I'm gonna end up going with a four foot door or not, but that's kind of what I have right now. So I've got a four foot door, transom on the side or on the top, and then side lights one and two. The two foot side lights, transom. So it's gonna be glass all on the top, all down the center except for the door, and then the side lights will be glass as well. Over here I've got, this is gonna be kind of the toilet area, the bathroom. So I've got a door that's gonna come in to the bathroom. Up there you can see another window that I'm gonna have, probably cut that baby in half. Have two windows up there. Then over here, it's gonna be the same thing. 
and have the roll up garage door there so I can fit my mower in here and all my uh, precious tools. And then I'm going to cut in a window on the top, similar to what you see over there. So one window there, another window there, windows across the top, garage door, man door, man door. So I guess you could say things are getting pretty serious because I'm getting pretty close in the framing. So I did have somebody comment in the last video about the, um, the placement of these eye joists right here for the roof joists. So what they were doing, they were asking about the bearing point over there of the eye joist sitting on top of that wall. Because this is a pitched roof, a 412 pitch, they're saying you've only got one eighth of an inch bearing on the top of that two by six wall up there. If you can see, there's two double top plates up there. And yes, it's bearing on that one eighth of an inch. But what you cannot see is there's another um, wedge that I've cut and put on top of the second top plate that is carrying the load. So here's the example of the other side of the shed. You can see the wedge right here. So I've got my two double top plates right here and I cut a wedge. This is a triangle wedge with the right degree of pitch or slope that this sits on. This is a two by four. So it's an inch and a half wide by about an inch and three quarter tall right here. And so that is the additional bearing point that this thing's sitting on over on this wall and on the wall over there. All right, so here you can see the edge of the wall is back here underneath this block right here. And then I've got this wedge right here. This is cut bevel cut on an 18 and a half degree angle. And then it is right here, an inch and three quarter tall or whatever the angle is that I needed for the height of this. So the bearing point is here and the bearing point is back there on the back that one eighth of an inch. I likely will come back later and put a hanger right here, a hurricane strap or hurricane anchor from Simpson strong tie. But anyways, that is how that works. This side's the same, you just can't see. Uh, it's bearing on the front side of this double top plate here. And on the back side, I've built that wedge by inch and three quarter by one and a half with the beveled edge that it sits on. So those are the bearing points there. So somebody was asking saying, well, why are you only bearing one eighth of an inch there? That can't be safe, blah, blah, blah. But no, it has been thought through and I did plan for that. And I did uh, do the bearing as to the best of my ability. And then up there, I also put screws from underneath the double top plate up into the joist for, to prepare for uplift. And then I'll, I'll likely come back and put straps on all of these joists as well. So that's the update for today. It's the 26th of January, making some pretty good progress. Once I get the windows uh, finished, cut out, I can order the windows. The only other thing I've got to do is just do the window there. And then I can start moving on to the next thing, which is going to be the siding or the house wrap. House wrap and then the insulation. And then I guess I'll wire it, I guess. I don't know. It's going well. I'm happy with uh, the results so far. Been a fun project. Thanks for coming along. If you like my videos, please share them with people that you know. If you don't like them, don't watch them. I don't care. But anyways, I appreciate you guys. Best viewers on the YouTubes. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.